Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. So the market has been pricing in the possibility of a Fed pivot of the Federal Reserve cutting rates. And this has been driving the stock market higher in a melt up kind of move. A lot of people are saying this is the beginning of a much larger move up as the markets can finally begin to start looking past uh, all of this monetary tightening that we've had throughout 2022 and pricing in higher valuations, pricing in the economic recovery that's going to come out on the other side. So in this video, we're going to take a look at data going back to the 1970s, seeing if a Fed pivot, if the Federal Reserve cutting rates uh, would actually mean that stocks rally much higher, whether there are examples in history similar to today that actually show us we're about to go on a massive uh, melt up in the stock market. By the way, if you are new here, do not forget uh, to click on that subscribe button. And of course, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to smash the like button as hard as you can. Now, without further ado, let's get right into it. Let me start by quickly reminding you that we are doing a special offer on the memberships on our website. We're giving you guys one full month of free access to all the features on our website. The goal is to give the chance to as many people as possible to test out the service, use the value that we actually provide and join our service to become more profitable in the market. This offer is only going to last a couple more days. All you have to do is go to our website, click on free trial, and you'll automatically start the one month free trial. So now let's take a look at this chart here that goes back to 1977. And it shows us the spread between the two year yield and the three month yield. So this is basically telling us what the bond market is expecting the Federal Reserve to do two years from now relative to three months from now. And you can see ever since the banking crisis so over the past month of data, we've had this indicator, this spread, you can call it a yield curve if you want, go into the deepest negative territory since the 1970s. Now, why is that? Well, if we think about what this indicator actually is, it's basically the bond market telling you that the Fed is going to decrease rates in the next two years relative to where we currently are. And we know that to be true, right? This is something we've talked about uh, a few times before. If you look at the Fed funds curve, the market is currently pricing in here a very aggressive easing of monetary policy throughout the rest of the year throughout 2023 and throughout 2024. And this is ever since the bank run on SVB, we've had a collapse in the Fed rate hike expectations. The markets were expecting the Fed to continue hiking rates till around the end of the year uh, to 5.5%. And then you had the banking crisis. And now they're just expecting one more rate hike and then monetary easing uh, beginning. Now the question is, isn't that bullish for the market? Arguably, if you look at the S&P 500 against the Fed funds rate, the entire bear market that we've had throughout 2022 has been a result of a rising federal funds rate. Even the beginning of the bear market here in 2022 was because of the anticipation that the Federal Reserve was going to raise rates to combat inflation that at the time was already at around seven to eight percent. So the market knew that the Fed was going to raise rates. Here it declined because the Federal Reserve continued on raising rates. And now we're seeing a rally as we reach the end of that tightening cycle. And the market is saying, OK, all of this is behind us. We can start to move higher again because the Fed is going to start cutting rates. But if we actually look at this chart, we back test it and we take a look at what happens to the unemployment rate every time you get this spread that goes to around these levels. Let me put a vertical line here uh, so you can see exactly every time this is happening where the unemployment rate is, uh, the unemployment rate here being in orange. You can see this is quite a beautiful back test with very little flaws here. I can also take a look at these two instances here where you had the spread collapse here below that black line. Let's zoom out and look at the bigger picture. You can see every single time, every single time this occurs in a period where the labor market, the unemployment rate 
is rising significantly. Either the unemployment rate has already begun to rise or it is about to begin rising as we are entering a recession. And in fact, the only recession that didn't see this signal occur was here in 1989, but it was pretty darn close. So you can argue that this is another one of those signals. Okay, that's great. That tells us that unemployment uh, is more than likely about to rise, uh, that based on the signal from the bond market, there is a very, very good chance that we are about to enter a recession. Now, of course, this is all very bad news for individuals and for the state of the economy in general. But what does that actually mean for the stock market? Because throughout history, we've actually seen quite peculiar market reactions to what was actually happening within the economy. We recently tweeted a very interesting chart that speaks exactly to this phenomenon. This chart actually shows what happens to stocks when the unemployment rate is rising uh, one to three months, four to six months out, and seven to nine months out. And this is using data going back to 1948. So even further than the back test that we just did. And you can see the vast majority of the time you have a rising unemployment rate be a very bad thing for the stock market in the first three months. Now, let me remind you, we haven't started to see the unemployment rate rise yet, right? It's just that we're getting a signal that that's about to happen. So this very uh, concerning black bar here is still in front of us, not behind us, at least when we look at data very objectively, very quantitatively, and we don't try and add a bias, we just look at the pure data. This is what it's telling us. Now, six months after the unemployment rate begins to rise, that's a completely different question. That's when you've probably had the Fed uh, ease monetary policy, and that's when you can probably start to price in an economic recovery. So if this signal actually plays out, which seems very likely based on history, a rising unemployment rate is likely to get priced in very quickly by the market. If we look at leading indicators of unemployment like job openings, we are seeing those decline. You can see here in 2021, job openings were unbelievably high, telling you you were going to get a very tight labor market, a very strong, strong labor market, which has been a problem for the Fed to fight inflation. And now you're getting the very opposite signal where you're getting job openings completely reverse and completely take the opposite direction. So if businesses are cutting their job openings, that probably coincides with also potentially layoffs, just like it did in 2007. Job openings were being cut and unemployment throughout this period was rising. And same thing in 2001, job openings were being cut and unemployment was rising. We haven't seen that yet. We've just seen job openings being cut aggressively Perhaps rising unemployment is not too far behind. Another leading indicator is temporary help services. This is a very sensitive data set and often shows weakness much before the actual unemployment rate. And you can see that's been rolling over more recently. If we look at that uh, as a year on year data set, you can see it's been contracting at the lowest level here minus 4% since COVID, of course, those were very strange convictions. If you uh, exclude COVID, it's at the lowest level since uh, 2007, actually January 2008. And before that, it was at around 4% in February 2001. So the labor market is showing signs of weakening here. And that's why the bond market is triggering this signal. That's why uh, market participants in the bond market that have an extremely good track record at being right about predicting economic outlook is telling the Fed right now, it's very good that you're being so tight right now uh, and being so serious about fighting inflation, but that's not going to last very long because before you know it, you're going to start to see unemployment rising and you're going to have to react to that because that's not a good thing for the economy. Now, if we actually compare this data set to the S&P 500 uh, to actually see uh, what it actually means for the stock market and not just the unemployment rate. Of course, we have COVID, but you know, COVID, I always want to exclude that 
from the data sets because that is a very, very uh, peculiar economic environment where you didn't have a classic business cycle recession in recovery. Things were very much accelerated during COVID where you had a uh, precipitated recession because of the shutdowns and a precipitated economic recovery because of massive stimulus that just sent the stock market skyrocketing higher. But if you look at classic business cycle recessions and when you have these signals, you can see 2000 was obviously very near the top, 2008, very near the top here. In 1981, right here, doesn't look like a very serious recession. This was a very violent bear market that actually lasted for two straight years while inflation was at around 15%. So this was a period of massive wealth destruction for anybody invested uh, in the stock market. Now, the only exception is actually 1979, where you have this signal right here, and then the stock market began to rise significantly. Is that a scenario that we can actually expect today? The first thing I want to highlight uh, regarding 1979 is that the stock market in nominal terms had been flat since 1966. So between 1966 and 1979, so for 13 years, the stock market went absolutely nowhere. It just went on a huge period of volatility here for over a decade. And if you look at valuations throughout this period between 1966 here, P ratios were at around 18 and look at where 1979 was seven. PE ratios were at seven. So valuations here were the lowest since the post World War period. Today, valuations are, of course, at 23 P ratios or 23. So the stock market today relative to 1979 is over three times more expensive. So you can see here during the recession, P ratios expanded significantly. So as unemployment was rising in 1979, 1980, you also had valuations expand because they were so low. And so valuations went from around 6.85 all the way to nine. So that's a 30% expansion in valuations in a very short period of time. And that's what drove this move higher in 1979. Could we have a 30% expansion in PE ratios today? That would mean PE ratios need to exceed 30 to see a real melt up in the stock market. You know, that's possible, right? We've had PE ratios at 30 before. In 1999, PE ratios were at around 30. This is a scenario that could happen if we do go into a euphoric type of bubble and the Federal Reserve begins to ease monetary policy very aggressively. You could imagine that type of scenario. But looking at history, looking at the entire data set, it doesn't seem like that's a very high probability bet here. The higher probability bet is that we are heading into a recession. P.E. ratios are not going to get much more expensive here because market participants are going to start getting worried about the unemployment rate. And so that could lead to a lower stock market. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button as hard as you can. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.